Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. This is the Clutter Fairy Weekly for March 22nd, 2022. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, certified professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is the webcast and podcast that digs deep into the clutter that piles up between you and the life you want to be living. We explore the habits and behaviors that lead to clutter, And we suggest strategies to slow the accumulation, reduce the collection, and comfortably manage the stuff we decide keep. If you're new to our Zoom meeting, we want to let you know that you can share your comments and questions via the chat feature. And I'll try to make sure Gail addresses them before we move on to another topic. You can also use the raise hand feature if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question yourself via audio or video. We're also streaming live on Facebook, so you can share your questions and comments there, and I'll relay them to Gail. We're going to start, as we usually do, by talking about last week's tittle, and we actually had two options. that We had several options there, depending on where people were in preparing their taxes. The title of last week's tittle was A Certain Thing 2022 Edition. The assignment was to spend a little time preparing to work on your tax return. If you don't have to file in April or you've already taken care of this year's taxes, then your assignment was to focus your attention on a project that you've been spending energy avoiding. We'd love to hear from our participants in Zoom and Facebook. Who tackled either of these tittles this week? Please let us know in the comments. Zoe on Facebook shared this comment. I rolled my eyes and sighed heavily when I heard the tittle (laughs) re- re-getting tax paperwork together in one place. I didn't want to think about taxes, but I just did it. I have a shiny new folder with 2021 taxes written on it and all my paperwork together. Woo, thank you for the homework and for breaking down the tediousness into bite-sized pieces. And on the alternate assignment, Nancy left a comment on the show notes for last week on our website. Nancy said, It's amazing how something so small in size could use up so much of my energy because of my avoidance. It's only taken me two and a half months to decide I couldn't use a very pretty calendar I got as a Christmas gift. Should I keep it or not? It's so pretty. I don't want to give it away, but I really can't use it. But it's so pretty. So today I made a commitment to a friend that I would let someone else get to use it for the remaining days of the year. Ed, I know you can figure that number out quickly. And that would be 284 days, which seems to me like plenty of time for someone else to enjoy that beautiful calendar. (laughs) Both of these comments were so great. They made me laugh. Zoe, I really had to laugh when you said that you rolled your eyes. When I really, I started reading that comment, I thought, oh God, she's really going to start complaining. But what she really said was, uh, I hate doing that stuff and you may be doing it anyway. We all hate being reminded of things that we need to accomplish, but I've been avoiding. And I'm very happy that as Zoe actually got it accomplished after all, taxes still have to be done and you've made it easier to do so. Big congrats on that one. Having your folder ready with all the stuff in it is just that many steps down the road towards getting it done. And Nancy perfectly described how avoidance drags things out forever she spent all that time waffling about what to do with the calendar and it just stayed an issue all that time good for you that you've promised a course of action and i caught that you used an accountability buddy to help you stick to it so good job on both counts um you guys both did a great job thank you thank you for telling us about it it was very entertaining for me (laughs) m said i sorted the tax info letters from the banks I would not have started had it not been for the tittle. I am about to download the forms so that I know where things will go on the forms. Catherine said, avoidance was a success. <laughs> I'm thinking that's a, that is probably a negative report. <laughs> okay, so your, um, your streak is still alive is what you're saying. <laughs> that's awesome. Emily Sue says, I think the only thing I've been able to do is remember that I have to do the taxes. I'm planning on tackling it this week. What's your suggestion? What's your suggestion there? Put make Um, an appointment, actually put an appointment on the calendar. Yeah. Put an appointment on the calendar next week. So you can um, know that you have a specific slot of time 
that has a start and an end because you're not going to, you know, sit there for 14 hours in a row. So go make a two hour appointment or a 90 minute appointment or whatever, and spend some amount of time working towards it. And when you got the 90 minutes done and you're going to go on to the next thing for your day, then you can also make the next appointment on your calendar so that you can keep making headway. Do your appointment, make your next appointment on the calendar so that you're always blocking the next round until you get it done. Rowan reports, I found my floor. And that sort of surprises me because I thought Rowan's floor was already accounted for. Do you want to, do you want, do you want to tell us more about that? Had yeah. you, Rowan, had you lost your floor again recently? Um, in the, the cold place that I live, I found, um, and I'm older, I needed new clothes. And uh, so work was very busy. To death. So everything became a big pile. And then I sorted my big pile and my housemate went, it doesn't look any different because you couldn't <laughs> see the floor. But then I then, you know, got it put away. So Right. Stage one is sorting. Stage two is placing. So you did both of those. Congratulations. Yay. And, uh, you know, now you got your floor again. And it's a perfect example of you get it done and it doesn't stay perfect. There's always maintenance, right? And so you just had a round of maintenance. Your life changed what was going on. And then you circled back and did your maintenance and got your floor back. So congrats. Tammy reported, I can't find my taxes yet, but I printed an extension form. Hey, step so one. That's a, that is a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lee said we did both front and backyard this week. Very sore, but feels good to have it done. I'm guessing that is on the, uh, that was in the category of project that's been avoided. Uh, yeah, I would avoid weeding at the great, uh, you know, great effort to avoid the weeding. So good for you. I enjoy weeding. It's sort of meditative and restful, but it is also brutal on the back. Yes. It's, it's really hard to find any way to do it that I'm not sore for days afterwards. Right, right. This doesn't take a big physical toll. Barbara said, I did my taxes and then found out that I could have taken a bigger deduction for the in-kind donations. Oh, well. You can file an, um, a an corrected amendment. return yeah. if you want. Yeah, just yeah. amend it. That's no big deal. And then Jane said, a large painting, 50 by 60, no longer hanging on the wall, finally got donated. Oh. Thanks for, thanks for the mo motivation since the taxes were already done. That's awesome. But that's a good one. Like that creates a bunch of uh, wall space that you can do something else with. And so that's fabulous. Okay. We have a lot to talk about on our main topic. So let's, let's head in that direction. All right. Many of our homes contain black holes that are easy to pack with clutter and even easier to ignore. Spare closets, basements, attics, crawl spaces, the cabinets under sinks, that drafty old wine cellar of yours, Gail. <laughs> yeah. There under, underneath the Clutter Fairy Mansion and so is on. Is the wine cellar that is behind yes. me? Yes. Got yes. it. <laughs> Today, we're going to unpack the mysteries of hidden spaces and offer ideas for keeping them in our awareness and under our control. <laughs> for those of you watching or listening, I can predict most of the time what you see is clutter. Anything sitting out on an open surface or on the floor in the pathways, anything visible when someone walks into your house. After that, I'm sure that those drawers and cabinets and closets that you go into all the time are top of the list of cluttered spaces, exactly because you go into them all the time. So you get reminded that they're a wreck every day. But what about those cabinets that you open once a year or a decade or never? Those places you filled with stuff that you never wanted to see again, couldn't bear to let go of. Remember putting all those boxes in the attic? When was the last time you could get up that drop-down ladder anyway? These are the hiding places we need to talk about today. But first, I want to discuss this. What does it mean when we choose to put things into hidden or difficult to access spaces? Is stashing things in cumbersome hiding places a practical storage system? Or is this just another way to avoid or put off an overdue keep-toss decision? Before you all start to explode, <laughs> 
I think it's a little bit of both. <clears throat> the less storage space in your house, the more creative you have to be about storing things. And those weird, oddly accessible spaces become a necessary part of the storage in your home. However, the less storage space you have in your home, the more necessary it becomes to shrink your contents to fit the home space you have instead of cramming it all in there willy-nilly. So you have to ask yourself this question. Am I stashing things in hard to use places just so I can keep more than will actually comfortably fit in this house? Am I avoiding making a final decision about something and letting things go that I really don't need to keep up with anymore? If you're lucky enough to have a house with lots of storage space, then you really need to ask why you're using all those hidden spaces to store things. Sure, you can fill up all the available space, but why? Why make your home a more stuffed box just because you can? In that situation, it's almost always because you're using the available storage to keep things rather than to curate them and make important keep toss decisions. It's quicker to stash things somewhere than to stop and make that it's time to make a it's time to get rid of it decision. And with lots of storage, you don't have the major consequences until you have to move or you go to your great reward in the sky and you leave an overstuffed house for your family to clean out. Better to, your, better to think of your stuff as coming in and going out with the tide. Things come in, they hang for a little bit in the house and then they need to roll back out. Don't worry, more will come back in with the tide. <laughs> There's more coming. So figure out a way for it to roll out again instead of your house becoming a stagnant backwater of old, stale, never used, long forgotten stuff. Now let's look at the various awkward hidden places where you stash stuff. And we can start at the top, as it were, your attic. I once got paid by a widower to clear out his attic because he couldn't climb the stairs anymore. His wife had been stashing things in there for their entire marriage. And you wouldn't believe what I had to carry down those stairs. So many old papers, old household goods, old everything, all covered in inches of dust and wasp nests, for God's sakes. Um, apparently, they had easy, undisturbed access under the eave straight into the attic. It was like an archaeological dig up there. If you're parking something in the attic, which almost always requires climbing a ladder, you've sent it into a dark hole and it's probably never coming out. <laughs> Clearly, the only decision you've made is where can I hide this forever? The attic above is mirrored by the basement below. Even if your basement isn't finished out as a regular room, a basement is another inside the house storage unit where things go to decompose. A basement is almost always a stash house for unwanted items that won't fit in another space in your house. Basements in particular are used as junk rooms that no one intends to ever clear out. Whether it was set up with shelves or storage of any kind, all after items have been added for so long, eventually all the stuff gets piled in together with no rhyme or reason and it becomes impassable and it's impossible to find anything anymore. The attic and the basement are big hidden rooms in the house, but what about the smaller hidey holes? Ed has cleverly suggested that we discuss the underworld and by that we mean under the kitchen sink, under the bathroom sink and under the bed. These are much smaller dark holes that things go into and then get lost forever. They're hard to reach and the openings are awfully weirdly shaped. There's all sorts of pipes under the sinks and the bed opening is only a few inches off the floor. Once something goes under the bed, you usually have to get on the floor with a stick to push things out the other side. Because of the odd shapes, these spaces are difficult to make fully functional without some special intervention. Even so, it's not hard at all to lose things in the underworld. The best you can hope for is that it's possible to retrieve something. Hardly ever is it easy to retrieve something. Another hidden difficult to use spot is those upper level kitchen cabinets. You know the ones. You can't get into them without a major step ladder. And maybe there's a similar bank of cabinets in the laundry room. Often things get tossed up there because it's too much of a hassle to get out the ladder. So you just sort of throw it up there. And it's so hard to reach over the washing machine. And the supreme upper cabinet space is that stupid cabinet over the fridge. 
<laughs> you have to put the step ladder next to the fridge, then reach over the top of the fridge to get something in there. I put things away on it clients' jobs all the time, but I know that stuff is never coming out again once I put it up there. These ladder dependent spaces are really black holes because it's hard to put stuff up there and twice as hard to get it back out. <clears throat> Another big hidden space is big furniture places. So think of entertainment centers that have all the cabinet fronts, built-in bookcases that have usually some kind of cabinets, china cabinets. So there's a glass part at the top, but then there's always a little cabinet at the bottom that you can stuff things in. Wardrobes, desk drawers, big coffee tables with storage. So maybe it's a coffee table where the, the lid comes up and there's storage underneath or there's a coffee table surface and then there's containers that go in underneath the bottom or it just has a bottom shelf. That's one of those places where things get chucked and nobody looks at it anymore. <laughs> you can it's also- A party you know, hiding place. Right, a party you know, hiding when, place. Yeah, when you're ready to, when you, it's time, you know, the party's 15 minutes away, people are about to arrive and- And oh my God, stash, 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 right? Exactly. And um, the pantry and fridge and freezer, those are hiding spaces for things that you um, never get all the way through because food is something that we keep adding things in the front, but we never go back and scoop it back out and scoop the old stuff out very well. So it is something that creates the back of the fridge, the back of the freezer or the bottom of the freezer <laughs> or the back of the pantry shelves, depending on how deep your pantry is becomes a place where things you know quietly shuffle a couple inches at a time as you put more things in front and they go to the back and they become lost forever or maybe you have a big walk-in pantry and it's got three sides and it has many shelves that go up to the ceiling and when you moved in you put a whole bunch of stuff on that shelf up at the top and you have to get out like a regular ladder like the step ladder isn't even tall enough <laughs> you have to get out a big ladder to get up there and put things up and it, they go up and they never come down again or you pitch something up there and you can't even see it anymore and so once it's sort of out of sight it's out of mind forever all those extra storage spaces in the pantry become a black hole that no one wants to get anything out of again you can also think of um, closets as a black hole it's a good hidden hiding space spare closets in particular so not your master closet that you, whichever closet you go in and out of every day, but all of the other closets that aren't primary use for your clothing, <clears throat> like a linen closet or the coat closet, they fall into that category or any spare bedroom that you're, somebody's not actually sleeping in and using the closet all the time. Uh, sometimes people use them to cycle the extra clothes, like the out of season clothes go in the spare and the, the current season clothes stay in the master and you cycle them in and out. But most of the time, they're just used as your little in-house storage units and things get stuffed in there and forgotten about. And I have excavated many a spare room closet and what comes out of them are uh, holiday decorations that nobody's using anymore, um, leftovers from the kids that used to live at home that don't live there anymore. They box up some things and shove them in the closet and you've long since forgotten about them and said, oh, that belongs to my kid or the things that are your kids are still living at home but this is the stuff when they were little and now those got shoved in the closet in the corner on the bottom or up above so that you can um, put in the things that they can currently wear and so the outer edges of the closet become hiding holes where old things go to die connie mentions children's former rooms yes as that this can be a great big hiding place if you haven't recaptured it reclaimed it for another purpose or several then it's sort of easy to just leave that door closed and occasionally it. open it to throw something in there and then pull it shut again <laughs> right exactly well and i think um parents are loath to go in and de-scrambleize their kids rooms they don't really want to figure out what went into that box that they put in or that they took to college or brought home from college or um, when they moved out after high school and they put a bunch of stuff in the box and said, 
I don't want this to come with me, but I want to keep it. And they just sort of shoved them in the closet. And the truth is they didn't make any keep toss decisions. They just shoved all their stuff in a box and shoved it in the closet because you are their free storage unit. And so there's probably a lot of stuff in there that they don't really give a rat's you know, what about at all. And there's plenty of things that can come out so that you can reclaim that space a little bit. Yes, you can keep a few boxes for your kids, but those boxes need to be curated and made sure that it's not just a whole bunch of trash in there that they didn't want to deal with in the moment because they were ready to go out and go to college or start their life or move across country or whatever they were doing to be on to their next thing. So those spare closets have a lot of leftover falderall that needs to be processed and moved along. <laughs> and, you know, yes, you can keep something for your kid, but you better be sure you know exactly what's in there and how big of a mess it is and whether it really has stuff that they care about now. Because in the moment when they were unpacking their room, when they were trying to move out, when they were getting ready to go to college, they were focused on what was coming and not what they were leaving behind. And so there's probably a lot of stuff in there that they haven't thought about for a minute. So you can take some pictures and send them some pictures and you can throw out the trash and pull out the pencils and find the old office supplies. And <laughs> there's lots of stuff that you can let go out of there. Um, another small hidey hole is a medicine cabinet. For some reason, we stash a lot of stuff in that medicine cabinet. It's all little bits. There's a million little uh, lip balms and old medications and whatever. And ultimately the medicine cabinet ends up being full of medicine that you're no longer taking and you don't trade it out because you don't want to have to deal with it. You don't trade it out for the current medications. And so the current medications is up on the counter in front of you. So that's another one. You just got to open the door and go uh, deep diving, do the excavation, find out what's in there and whether it's all stuff that you really care about or not. Because, you know, wouldn't it be better if you could put your current medication back in the medicine cabinet? Just a thought. Um, the last one I'm going to talk about here is uh, jewelry boxes and accessory trays. Girls in particular do this where, you know, they just add more jewelry boxes instead of going through and looking at the jewelry and deciding whether they would keep it or not, all, all or not, whether they would still wear it. And so um, we just add another little box. And then the little box becomes the place where we stash little pieces of paper and extra coins and buttons and whatever. And no one ever goes and cleans it back out. So it's a good one to go fluff, 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 pull everything out, resort it all, figure out that you've lost five of those earrings. You've only got one of a pair of earrings and you would never wear this necklace again and move that stuff along. The masculine version of that is those accessory trays that sit out where you're supposed to come and put your watch in your wallet and, it, you know, collar ties and whatever, cufflinks, those trays end up being, you know, collect the coins, <laughs> collect the trash, collect the paper out of the wallet. They end up being drowned and never fluffed again. And so that's another good one that it's short and it's small and it's tiny and it's easy to clear out. There's so many stash spaces in your house and I'm sure you have a few or a lot in your space. But my final message is this, you don't have to fill all of them and the stuff that you're trying to cram in them is probably stuff you need to seriously consider whether you still need it or not. A big purge of those hidden spaces and a round of long overdue keep toss decisions and you'll have a lot more breathing room in your house. So who wants to tell me about their crazy space in their house? <laughs> well, M said um, in reference to the scene behind you, if that were my wine cellar, it would be stuffed with boxes, china, furniture, artwork, work, scrapbooks, alas, et cetera. <laughs> right? <And laughs> others chimed in to agree. <laughs> Um, Marcy said, we have what is supposed to be a little wine closet off of the bar that we don't use. And I took off the wine bottle part of the shelves and put other things there, plus the extra area under the stairs. We didn't mention under the stairs. Yeah, that's a good hiding that hole. That is another hiding place. Yeah. And usually because it, it sometimes goes in the side and then goes around underneath, like sometimes that room, it makes a curve or it goes back under the, the bottom part of the stairs. And so you end up bent way over at the waist trying to get those boxes. 
pots back yeah. in there. Yeah, I've cleaned out a few of those in my time. That is a serious stash space. Linda said, I use one of my closets for staging on the way out. If I can let clothes hang in there for a while, it's easier to know for sure I am ready for those items to go. Okay. Um, you have a parking space working. Emily Sue said, I can think of some things I can throw out at the top cabinet in my kitchen. We actually use those troublesome cabinets above the refrigerator because I am one of the two percent of human beings who can reach them without a ladder right so that's where <laughs> spare napkins paper towels and dog food live which is wonderful because you're six foot four yes and we live in a tiny house right and so you can actually reach up there um, most of the people that I work for, we got to get out the ladder and climb up there. I certainly, and then half the time you end up going up the ladder and then standing on the counter and then reaching over the fridge to get into that stupid cabinet over the fridge. Yikes. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And so, and then you have to like reverse that. So at some point that operation becomes not possible. It becomes a safety hazard for you to be getting up on the ladder and, you know, better that I go up on the ladder and do it, but you know, I know you can't get it out later. You're not going to be able to get down and climb up there and pull something out. So. Well, and you also have to sort of make a trade between do I put things in those cabinets or can, do I store things on top of the fridge? Because on top mm -hmm. of the fridge, is a handier storage place where most people could reach something like boxes of cereal or bins, uh, you know, light bins, light things that you can mm -hmm. store yeah. up high. And if you put anything in those cabinets, you can't conveniently store anything on top. No. Yeah. Cause you either have to be able to leave it clear so you can open the doors or you put it in front and then you can't open the doors. And so then right. you effectively locked yourselves out. You can only use them for things that you get out once in a blue moon. Right. When you're willing to unpack it all. Right. <laughs> Barbara said, I had, a, I had really deep shelves in my bathroom, plus huge drawers in both bathrooms in one house. Found six deodorants when we moved. Didn't right? buy more for two years. <laughs> right because they had been stashed back there yeah a lot of times the, the bathrooms if the bathrooms are bigger then you get a wall of cabinet is that is as deep as the the bathroom counter right. and so it's it's like one it's like the pantry that you can reach all the way back in and get your whole arm in there and unless you plan for being able to pull that stuff out the stuff in the back gets completely forgotten do you ever put like um alpha or similar pull out baskets in those oh yeah you can um uh, you can put down um Tracks. rails that hold yeah. the the slide out drawers yeah i've also used um oh gosh i'm gonna forget the name uh, there are people that make custom slide out drawers that take the existing space and and substitute out a slide out shelf that's on track that can hold a lot of weight that's shelf genie thank you linda it is shelf genie so they can do that and then um, um you can also uh, use bins and I, and I tend to use long narrow bins like you would use in a refrigerator where the front space isn't very wide but it's also deep and then you can have some long thin um, boxes that you can pull out the edges and see into it and that helps you take um, advantage of the of the depth as well and not lose it as much yeah Emma says, I use ladder dependent storage for things that are used once or twice a year, mm -hmm. which is a good strategy. And, and in fact, wouldn't you, I mean, there's another important point in there, which is if you are putting things in your hiding places, they should be things that you do use, not just, not just hide. <laughs> that's a very, very good point. Like that's the whole part of it's a hidey hole and you hide it so that you don't have to think about it anymore. And then it's still there 20 years later. And it, I'm thinking of this, this attic that I was talking about at the beginning was um, the guy had a foot injury and um, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't cl comfortably climb this to the second floor. And the access was off of the second floor hallway, the attic part and the attic run ran the whole length of the front of the house. So it was walk in but it was at the outer edge of the house. So the roof was slanted at the back, 
but it was the whole length of the house was this open space and his wife had been stashing things up there forever and it was completely full and he got worried because one of his neighbors said that there they had a a pipe issue or something happened with the water in their house and they had to get in the attic and he had to clean out a, a pathway for the person to get into the attic and so he got worried about it because he hadn't been up there in a decade and so he was asking you know i need i need this to be cleared out so that if there's a problem they can get in there and i can't go up and so i spent many appointments hauling stuff down these stairs and it was old work paperwork of the wives and old crafts and this is where all the photographs ended up and this is where all the kids um, cast offs went and here's old storage containers that didn't have anything in them and here's the old fabric like you could tell all of her hobbies that she started and did for a while and then stopped doing they all ended up in there and I ended up with an immense amount I made millions of car rides back and forth with all the stuff to donate and there was hardly anything in there that he wanted. There were, we shredded a bunch of old tax files. We pulled out some photographs and I left them for the family to look at. But, and there was some artwork, but hardly anything beyond that stayed in the house. It all just came downstairs and went in my car to be hauled off. And it was a massive project. And I'm sure that his children will be quite shocked when they have to go up there and realize there's not, they can empty the house when he's gone, they're going to have that much less to haul away. So you are creating those hidey holes are you're creating the necessity for someone beside you to haul it off when you uh, go to your great reward, or you will have to dig it out when you decide that you need to move. And so you're just postponing your pain at this point. And you have to think, do I really need to work this hard to get it in this really weird space? Or am I really um, making it obvious to myself that I probably don't actually need this anymore? I can't remember if I've ever shared the story with you before, but a friend of mine bought a house in Montrose in Houston that an old couple had lived in till the last of them died mm. and the children didn't want to deal with it so they just they put it on the market as is it had an attic packed full of stuff and so wow. they bought it you know as is with contents and they found my friend found $35,000 in cash in the attic wow <laughs> wow so, seriously if you have a packed attic and you need an incentive <laughs> to, to maybe deal with that out. stuff especially <laughs> if it's someone else's stuff that you inherited and you're not you know you don't know you don't really know what's up there you should probably dig it out that's crazy and then i also uh, just started reading a book of letters from kurt vonnegut to his first wife Oh. that his daughter found when she went to clean out her mother's attic. There was all kinds of junk up there, and she found a box of previously unpublished writing of Kurt Vonnegut that wow, she turned, that's turned into a book. Yeah, very I'm cool. I'm sure. How cool. Connie that's said, you are, thing. you are forgetting the freezer. Did we not talk about the freezer? Um, the yeah, we, we did talk about the freezer and the fridge a little bit, but yes, she's right. Um, freezer is a good place to stash stuff and, you know, you know, it doesn't stay frozen forever. Sometimes it just dies. <laughs> so yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta almost, the freezer. Almost nothing that is sold for storage can really stand up to the freezer indefinitely. So mm -hmm. you know, freezer burn gets in there into everything sooner or later. Right. And if you find that you're throwing out a lot of food when you go into the freezer that you're constantly um, going in and finding something else that's died then you have to tell yourself that you're buying more food than your family is consuming and you need to slow down the volume of what you're purchasing if it doesn't come home with you then you don't have to throw it away later that's true Just saying. melanie melanie says yes out of sight out of mind that's why i often have things stacked visibly but then i have clutter i have adhd bad and get distracted so easily so visible storage mechanisms are really necessary 
but I need neat visible solutions. Yes, you do. And you probably need some labeling and you probably need to consider that being ADD and easily distracted means that more isn't helpful to you. More is a really a detriment to you. And so keeping, being more ruthless about what you let go can only improve your situation for you. If there's less there to look at, it's easier to find things and it's um, the piles are less distracting. It's easier to corral and it'll be easier for you to function if you can um, decide that you don't have to keep every single thing and be really ruthless about it because you're just going to help your future self. Solution. And and look oh. into, I'm sorry, and you know, make sure that you're looking into um, doing doing the digging and the research about what works for ADD people and focus on solutions that work for ADD brains. Oh, Linda said, I like clear bins for that reason. Mm -hmm. M said, my uncle used cardboard tags on long strings dangling at reading height for the things he had stored in the rafters so that he could find what he needed. Oh, that's a, interesting. That's a pretty cool solution. Kind of fun. <laughs> I wonder if that was a garage thing or an attic thing. And Good question. Said, that yeah. would have been a garage thing. Right. Garage, she says. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it, it's a great solution. And some people would find the dangling tags annoying, but I love that it's like creates a, it was like a card catalog for the, for the contents of the, of what was up in the rafters. So it works. If you can be, if you're okay with the dangling uh, participles there, the little <laughs> labels hanging, then it would work. Connie says, I have a large standing jewelry box that I am afraid to put valuable things into. So I use it as a giant junk drawer for crafts, batteries, tools, etc. If a robber mm -hmm. ever tries to grab my jewelry, surprise. <laughs> well, and it, you probably still can go into it and make it not be a super cluttered mess so that you can actually use the stuff that you're stashing in there and surprise to the burglar he'll just get organized batteries instead of jewelry um samudra reminded us that uh medicine cabinets are a really bad place to store medicine mm. if it's if it's you know if you have a small wet you know bath a bathroom that's always humid and damp it's not great for the life of medicine so you might right. be better with those somewhere else Nicolette said, don't forget the cellar. Now we talked about basements and I don't know, is there any, uh, you know, I haven't lived in places with basements or cellars in such a long time. I'm not mm. sure. Is, is there any distinction between a basement and a cellar? It's a good question. I don't mean, wine cellar, that. obviously your cellar. Right, right, right. There right. Is... <laughs> yeah. Well, and it may be a, mat a matter of um, the finishing and whether it's, um, more ex more exposed to the elements or less but truthfully if you think about it any room down at the bottom of the house if it's more exposed to the elements it's less of a reason to stash things there and it's more of a reason to go and circle through the contents and say have the it has the thing that i put out there um is it is it aging is it being destroyed is it being you know is it being turned is it being eaten? <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I will say that I went into, um, where am I thinking of? Oh, I went into an attic over a garage. So it was not an attic that was climate controlled in any way. And they had the, the couple that had this space had dashed all of their kids toys. The kids were long grown adults and all of the kids stuff that they were saving for the grandkids went up there and um they were going to move and so we had to empty it so uh, a I, we had to put a ladder up there had to climb up there and hand things down the hole to them at the bottom and everything it's houston of course everything that came out was covered in roach poo. yes yes yeah, like there was roach stuff everywhere it was all dusty it was all the plastic was cracked and dried because of the heat level just completely destroys the plastic so every plastic toy up there was basically you know if we touched it it broke in a million pieces because it was so dry and hard and it just basically they put it was like they put it in a crock pot and left it to sit for 20 years and when i went to take it out everything just crumbled into dust and so we basically threw away 
95% of the contents of that attic. And at the time, if they had decided, okay, we don't need this stuff anymore. And we can say one or two things for the grandkids and I can pass them on and let someone else use them. Somebody could have been using those toys for another five years or 10 years, instead of cooking them at 130 degrees in the Houston heat every summer for a decade and letting them die. And so you will create a toxic mess that you have to clean up if you stash things in non-climate controlled areas, particularly. Yes, I'm preaching it. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Karen on Facebook said, my crawl space is full of decorations. I hope to clean it out by fall. We didn't really talk much about crawl spaces they're, I mean, similar to basements, but sometimes even worse because they're often open, have open ventilation to the outside. Yeah. And so there's really very little, I mean, unless you, you can put closed containers, if they're really good closed containers that will preserve the contents, but you have to be pretty careful about storing anything that's vulnerable to moisture, mold, insects, rodents, et cetera. Yeah, all that stuff, right? The other thing is you have to, with crawl spaces, you have to be a little careful to make sure that you are not blocking emergency access to utilities. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if somebody had to get down there to mess with pipes or, or uh, wiring, you don't want to have to pull everything out that you've stuck in there. Right. Well, and truthfully, if you have to shove it in a crawl space, you're desperate to keep it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you need to rethink about why you're working that hard to keep it. And if it's, if you need to keep it that bad, then you have to ask yourself, uh, what am I keeping in the house that I can really let go of so that this can stay in the house? Because it, it, a crawl space is just like, it's hard to get to, it blocks access. It's not climate controlled. It's a pain in the patootie to get it out, back out again. And, you know, it really, there's hardly any good reason to stick it there unless you really are desperate and and you're and you're happy to have it be exposed to the elements. Right. Not much passes that bar, I'm telling right. you. Right. Rowan shared a great tip, uh, that, which is that broken jewelry and single earrings are great for crafters. Yes, that is. So you can that keep is them for crafty your crafty jewelry. That's like a tra crafty little <laughs> gift bag. <laughs> you can hand to somebody hand keep it for your own projects if you do that kind of thing or give it to a crafty friend or donate it to a creative reuse center absolutely that's exactly the kind of stuff i take to texas art asylum all the time emily sue said it is easy it's it's easier to get rid of things especially if it will be replaced later when there is a steady source of income if someone endures long periods of unemployment there might be hesitation to part with things cared about unemployment really changes mindset and the tendency of keeping things is there. I get it. I do because yeah. you feel like the resources are lost forever. Um, and people who are unemployed um, usually get reemployed later. Um, of course, there's stories where that isn't true, but most of the time you're unemployed for a while and then you get employment again. <clears throat> and you can also think about if you need money to replace something, you probably have something else in the house that you can sell, trade, you know, put into a resale store and get money out for. I mean, there's there's other ways that you can generate a little income to replace something if you're worried about it. But you can also not give away everything, but thin the volume of things. So a lot of times we have way too much of something and we're trying to store 15 items of the same thing when we can really get by with three and so you can keep the variety and reduce the volume and still make an impact on your storage capacity and not be completely without of something if you're um, concerned about well, that and it's always it's always a matter of finding the the balance that works for you between mm -hmm. the risk that i will need this again but not be able to get it again i won't be able to afford it won't be able to find the same thing and what is it costing you to keep it we we i don't think we talk enough about what it costs to keep things and we do indirectly but you know yeah. 
it what the cost of clean keeping it clean using up storage space for it having to move it out of the way to get to the things that are behind it et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. there's always a cost in your life to the stuff you choose to keep in in terms of maintaining the house having it be easy to function i mean i think the biggest uh, thing that we sacrifice the first thing that we sacrifice is functionality we keep up to the we keep things to the detriment of our functionality and if you find that the things that you're keeping are preventing you from doing something easily then it's it's worth another look it may be hard to replace but almost all the time there's something else that you can use in its place the, the example that comes to mind to me is we talk about multi-use kitchen tools a lot if you don't have a big kitchen, if you have a little bitty kitchen, then <clears throat> keeping a whole bunch of things that only do one thing in the kitchen instead of a few things that have multiple uses means that you're crowded out of your kitchen. And there's an equivalent of that everywhere. Yes, you have this one thing and it serves this one purpose, but is there another item that can solve that problem? And then you don't have to keep two things. You can just keep one. It is an evaluation about how much space do you want to give over to making sure you're prepared for any possibility versus living comfortably in the space and functioning easily and not struggling every day to do the basic things. And so reaching that balance for yourself is important. Well, and then, you know, the, the spectrum of, of uh, diminishing functionality eventually reaches risks to your health and risks to your safety. If you have so much stuff that you can't move safely around, then something has to go, even if there is a risk of Being needing without. to replace it later. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, not tripping and falling in your hallway or not being able to escape your house because the back door is blocked or not falling down on something and having stuff fall over on top of you is a more important safety concern than can you still use that thing later when you think you need it. And I think people forget, yeah, you don't have something, but you can be creative about figuring out another option and you can call your friends and say, Hey, um, I, I could really use my, my family's coming. I could use that a platter. Do you have a platter I can borrow? I mean, there's ways to solve the problem that are creative that don't require you keeping stuff against all possibilities or you keep your favorite platter and you let the other five platters that you have in there go and you just use your favorite platter for everything. <laughs> so, I mean, there's ways to cope and still be able to do what you want to do. Karen had a follow-up <laughs> comment. She said, my crawl space is vapor wrapped in the basement and perfect for storage. I am just not storing things anymore. Thanks to the clutter fairy. Yay. <laughs> and you know what? You're going to be super happy when you move out of that house someday that you don't have to go uh, digging through the crawl space and finding stuff. It is, it is the funny response that I, people that when I work with people and they're, we're clearing out a space and we end up with some negative space. Like we end up with a shelf that doesn't have anything on it or a drawer that doesn't have very much in it. And people sort of respond to that by going, oh my gosh, we need to put something in there. It's like, no, no, you can just live with the space that's empty and or thin, right? You don't have to fill it up. It does not have to be jammed. And so um, just live with it as not very much in the cabinet and be happy about that and see what it's like. And, you know, find out how much easier it is to get in and out of that cabinet because there's not very much in it and see what that change uh, does to your existence. You know, I don't have it right at my right at my fingertips, but there was a YouTube this week, a uh, YouTube comment this week from someone who had a wall of boxes in a, in the bedroom. And she said, until she forced herself to deal with it and unpack and remove those boxes, she really hadn't, she hadn't even realized the cost it was, taking the toll it was taking on her you know so look at the boxes and be in there the the first time she went back into the room after the last box was gone the feeling of relief was so huge 
we we do a whole lot to avoid 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 and um it takes a lot of mental energy right and when you can finally clear it out and say i'm done it's complete you're gonna feel a lot of relief you're gonna realize how much energy and noise that you are <laughs> you make it in trying to ignore the wall of boxes and nobody hey. says you have to do it all at once that's the whole thing I need to make a couple quick announcements. Uh, first one is I want to remind those who are watching or listening live that we have a YouTube channel with nearly 200, it might be over 200, I'm not even sure, videos right. because YouTube does not make it easy to count how many videos you have <laughs> on all kinds of organizing topics. Visit cfhou.com slash YouTube. While you're there, click subscribe and click the bell icon next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notifications when we post a new video let's talk about next week okay Sp spring in the northern hemisphere is finally here hooray Yay. bringing warmer days more sunlight and we hope a burst of fresh energy let's take advantage of an early spring day to spring forward on a few household organizing tasks in our next episode We'll look at often neglected corners of our lives and share a list of simple tasks where you can score big decluttering wins. Join us on March 29th at the usual time, noon U.S. Central Time, for Spring into Decluttering, 20 Tiny Projects to Start Moving Forward. That will be fun. Let's talk tittle. Tittle. The tittle this week is called Coming Out of the Dark. Um, the assignment is to take inventory of your hidden spaces and to make a plan for excavating the shadiest of your home's hiding spaces. So you wanna jot down a list of places in your home where you know, or you at least suspect that you have hidden clutter. You can find a sample list of uh, possible hidden spaces and we're gonna put them on our show notes. So you can go there to see the list. Oh, but let, me share that. let me share that slide again. Oh yeah, so you're gonna show the slide. Make okay. a note. You can make a note of that URL, cfhou.com slash tcfw one one two right and that'll be up by it's usually been it's lately it's been mid-morning on wednesday mid-morning eastern day. time uh the day after is when i usually have that posted when it gets done some examples are like we've talked about today your basement your coat closet your jewelry box your medicine cabinet under the bed under the kitchen sink so you want to highlight or mark with an asterisk the three hiding places that you've been ignoring for the longest. So you're going to make your full list of all the spaces you think have hide, hidden stuff, but then go more asterisk the three um, oldest ones <laughs> and make an appointment with yourself to take a look at one of these black holes and process any clutter that you find. Once you've gotten that one done, then schedule appointments to manage the clutter in the other two ones that you asterisk. And if you find that you're successful about clearing them out, you might want to work your way down the rest of the list. But your tittle for this week is to make the list, pick three, and make an appointment to work on one and schedule appointments for the others. And then let's see if you can come back and tell us what kind of crazy stuff you found in your hidden spaces. Ani said, and this is here's another another cash incentive for anyone who needs one right connie says my husband uses his car as a giant hidey hole slash trash can i once <laughs> cleaned it out and found 350 dollars in singles and coins oh which my we, god which we used to make an extra payment on his car loan look at that oh my goodness and that's like if you ever want incentive for doing the decluttering and you start finding money, you can just tell yourself, I'm getting paid for doing the work today. $350 is a pretty good payment for the hard work cleaning out his car. I'm sure it was a disaster zone. Well, here's one more from Whitney. I cleaned out my under the stairs closet this morning, found a bag of goggles, and now I can return the ones arriving from Amazon tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Yay. Because you'd forgotten they were in there, didn't you? That's awesome. There you go. You just say, when see that way, you just save yourself the money that you spent on the new goggles. Okay. That's wonderful. We are about out of time. So okay. um, if you're watching this on YouTube, we would love for you to join us live to get notifications about upcoming events. We invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. 
You can also follow us on Facebook by going to cfhou.com slash Facebook or subscribe to our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. We love to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and topic suggestions on YouTube, Facebook, or anywhere else that you find us. And you can always reach us through our website at clutterfairhouston.com. Thanks, everybody, for coming this week. We're always happy to see you, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.